in this tutorial first i will clear this round post from being a closure to a controller based method so that i can represent it in one line and the code can go inside the controller and second we will change the pdo code so that when we are generating an oauth token using the pass password type grant the username and password is validated against my own user table instead of the user table which comes with oauth package if you see inside the migrations the create oauth tables generates a table of its own called oauth underscore user but i have a migration of my own user table which comes by default with laravel which is this now obviously most of the time the requirement will be to validate the user's credentials against this table so what we will do is change or rather create our own class which will extend this pdo class and we will change the queries which are responsible for matching the username and password so let's create a controller and i'll name it oauth controller and for i have already written the code so i will just copy paste and go through the code so that you understand all right this is a namespace and what i have done is basically copied almost the exact code which is there in the routes closure the only difference is the oauth http foundation bridge request is referenced a little different here and i am opening the request instance instead of using the static method inside the closure just to make things work correctly i will delete this and reference it using the controller so it will become or slash token or controller activate method code. All right. So this is how I have refactored uh, my routes closure to put all the logic inside the controller and just reference inside the routes.php in one line. Now that I have cleaned up the closure, it's time to create my own user in the user table row so that I can have a valid username password to send in the grant type. Now in my user table seeder, I have used the faker library to generate some 10 random users. But now I need to create a valid user. So what I will do is first user will be my email id is reach me at yahoo.com password is password and that's it let's run the migration so i see that php artisan db seed The first user is reachmeatamitavroy.com, email address, name is Roy, and I have one user which comes by default with the seeder of OAuth from bshuffer which is username bshuffer and I think the password is brand 23 Next thing is we will create our own 
PTO instance, which is extending this library, uh, sorry, this class. So if you see, this is inside B Shepherd source for two storage. The class name is PTO. What I will do is create my own class which implements or uh, sorry extends this class to get more clarity on what the PTO is doing and what are the different methods which we need to override inside the PTO class to get our password grant type to work. Let's check the user credentials implementation which is user credentials.php class. Inside this we can see that it is implementing the grant type interface which means this is the query string identifier returning password which means whenever the grant type which we pass is password it knows that we need to run the validation against this class the second method which is validate request is basically where all the authentication is working if this method returns true that means that the user is authenticated and we can then generate an access token which is this method and if this is false then we give him the invalid username password or invalid authentication error message so as you can see the user credential is first checking whether the username and password is there in the request object or not then it is checking for the user credentials and this is the get user details method now what is this check user credentials here this is interface method which needs to be implemented. I am sure this is something which you will find in the PDO class. So let's look for check user credentials. Yes. And inside check user credentials, what it is doing is taking the username and it's getting the user object. This is the statement which is getting executed. And if you see, the select star from table name is from the config. And we have to change this config table so that the select query runs not from the table which B Schaffer has mentioned but instead from our own table. Alright, so let's extend the PDO class and make those overrides. I will quickly create a class called my PDO inside the controllers for now. My PDO and copy paste the code which I have already written and then I will explain you what's going on. So this is a class my PDO which will be extending the PDO class. In the construct I am first calling the parent construct and in the config I am telling that the user table will not be OAuth underscore user but instead the user's table. This is where we are overriding the config object. If we go in the PDO class and go right up you will see that there is a protected dollar config and in the constructor this is getting assigned the OAuth underscore users value what we have done is change that to user state the next method which we have extended is the check users credential which is being used in the user credentials grant type interface this is responsible for the authentication so what i have done is implement extended the method and here i have used the laravel's auth library to validate the email and password against the username password which will be sent the next method is the get user because this method is returning the user object and from there we are getting the user id which is the username the next method is get user where i am overriding the select statement a bit if you see the where clause is email equals username whereas in the default pdo library class the method had where username equals username because my username in the users table is actually the user's email address. The rest is fine. And then the two other methods which we need to override is the set access token where the expires time is set and then I am checking if the user ID is numeric and the user ID is being set from the users table. 
So whatever is the user ID in the users table is getting assigned in the user ID field so that when the update is happening on the access token table which is this the user ID will always be same as what's the user ID in the user table and the same is happening for the next function or rather method which is set refresh token again it's an insert or update where the user ID is actually the user ID of the user from the user table which we have custom built so once this class is ready what we need to do is inside the routes change the PDO to my PDO and we need to import the class sorry this is not inside OOPS to storage it is mine PDO ok import once this is done I am sure we are ready to generate our access token so I will go into my postman and if you see my URL is localhost 8000 OAuth slash token grant type is password the username is reachme at amitabra.com which is same as the users table where my email id is reachme at amitabra.com and the password is something which I have added in the seed table and now if I generate an access token you can see that I am able to generate the access tokens all right so let's take the database there are five access tokens the last access token is f99344 which is f99344 this means the new implementation with my video is working and for some reason if you want to check whether the old version is also working or not let's undo and the shaffer. I'm sure the username was the shaffer. Just double check. It's the shaffer, yes. And password was Brent123. I'm scared. Send no. Oh. So it's, it's PDO or not that is that way. Save it and run it again. And as you can see, the access token is getting generated. User ID here was B Shaffer because in the username inside the user OAuth underscore user it's always b -shell. but we have overridden my PDO to have the username as the user ID that's about it guys if you like the video click on the thumbs up button to like this video and subscribe to my channel I also post a lot of tutorials on my website which is amitavroy.com so if you like the tutorials on this website you can subscribe to my updates 